Hey everybody, welcome back to Uncle Pookie's Barbecue. Uh, I'm Uncle Pookie, and uh, welcome to episode two, I guess you could say. Uh, we're going to stick with the theme of simple everyday backyard barbecue, and one of the most popular everyday backyard barbecue things around here uh, in the Memphis area is ribs. So uh, I've got my Weber kettle up, and uh, we're going to be uh, grilling them on that. We're actually going to slow cook them or smoke them on the Weber kettle. Uh, I'm going to show you how I set it up for an indirect cook. Kind of use a snake method where I'm lining the outside edge of the kettle uh, with the charcoal and uh, putting in a couple of chunks of wood for the early portion of the, uh, the cook so that we'll get some uh, apple wood flavoring uh, and some smoke on those ribs before we wrap them up. But again, this is a, a recipe that anybody and everybody, I mean, I know, I don't know many people that don't have or have not have some sort of a kettle style or Weber kettle style barbecue grill. Uh, a lot of makers make them. Uh, you can get them as cheap as maybe 50 or 60 bucks in some stores. So this is basically just a way that anybody can use any type of a grill and use it as a smoker. Um, the ribs are not a very long cook, maybe five to six hours. So uh, again, we're gonna make this a good, simple, easy cook. Um, that anybody and everybody can do at home. So uh, appreciate y'all tuning in. If you like this video or any of the others, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, that way you'll get updates when I do uh, produce a new video. Uh, share them with your friends and family. Let them know that we're here. I uh, appreciate y'all tuning in. And uh, if you do have any questions or anything, hit me up, make comments on the video. Um, or uh, you can find me on Facebook, uh, YouTube, of course, Twitter, Instagram, um, or my website, which is www.unclepookiebarbecue.com. Um, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram are all Uncle Pookie Barbecue. So if you have any questions or anything I can help with, just hit me up, let me know, and y'all enjoy this video. Well, alrighty. I wanted to show you the way I set up this uh, kettle grill as an indirect smoker for these ribs. As you can see what I've done, I've taken some of my Jealous Devil lump charcoal and lined it around one half and on the back side. I've got my Lightning Nugget uh, fire starter there. And I've only got a couple of chunks of apple wood. Uh, I like the apple wood because it does put out a good smoke flavor, but it's not overpowering like some of the harsher woods can be. And especially for ribs, you, you don't want, you want a smoky flavor, but you don't want to taste just smoke. So uh, what I'm going to do is light this little, the lightning nugget. And these little balls of uh, sawdust and wax do a great job. I'm just holding my little mini torch on it for it to get started up. And it's just, it's going to take a long time. It burns for over 15 minutes. And once this lump gets started, I'm going to taper back my air vents down on the inside. And on top of the grill, I'm going to taper those back. And I'm going to have my little dot um, probe thermometer in here to keep, help me keep an eye on the temperatures. I want to keep this smoker or this, this kettle grill at around 250 degrees. We're not grilling these ribs. We're wanting to smoke them. Um, now, one thing that I do, a lot of folks might say, oh, well, you know, you're not truly barbecuing, blah, blah, blah. Well, I'm lazy. <laughs> so uh, once I wrap these ribs, um, unless I've got a lot of charcoal left, um, a lot of times I'm gonna wrap them in foil, put my little seasons on the inside of that foil, and then put them in the oven. Uh, they're not going to get any more smoke flavor out here on the grill. And if it's windy or if I'm just having trouble keeping this temperature consistent, uh, the easiest thing in the world to do to finish these ribs off is wrap them in full and put them in the oven to finish up. So that's what we're probably going to do today. Um, I'm just going to wait and see. I, I, I want this to be a everyday backyard griller type video series and that's the way I'm treating it so uh, we're just going to play this as mother nature and the charcoal lets us do so 
we're going to go in and get let this get started and uh, in a few minutes I'm going to put the lid on it to stabilize. I don't want all of this charcoal to burn at one time. That's why we kind of did this snake method so that a little bit will burn as it catches and goes around. So uh, anyway, uh, let me go get these ribs started and we'll be right back. All right, let's get started here. Um, again, this is everyday backyard uh, barbecue. So I just went down to my local supermarket and picked up two racks of baby back ribs. Now, people have their different preferences, what they like and what they don't like. Uh, personally, a lot of times you'll see a rack of ribs with a really, really narrow end on one side and a really, really long bone on the other side. If you like that, that's great. I'm not telling you what's right or wrong. I personally like something that's a little more uniform. Um, the thick side and then the thin side, you, you can't really get away from that unless you start trimming the thick side down some. But the bone length, especially if you go to a grocer that sells them one rack at a time, um, when you buy the two or three uh, rack packs, um, a lot of times what, what uh, producers will do is, is put your, your good looking straight bone rack on the bottom a real funky uh, kind of a off shaped or um, not quite as meaty rack in the middle and then a real pretty rack on top where the meat side looks real pretty so you look at the top you look at the bottom everything looks good then you get a third rack in the middle that may be not so great so anyway what I did is again I find racks that are fairly consistent I don't want just super small bones here and I don't want really really long bones on the other end so um, both of these racks were fairly consistent. I mean, you're going to have some difference between the two ends, but it's not that bad on these two. Uh, I do want to give a shout out and thank you to Mad Cow Cutlery uh, for the knives. Um, I'd never used them before. Uh, they sent me a few uh, to try out, and man, these things are super sharp. I've never been able to cut through the, the plastic wrapper on these ribs like this, so uh, thanks a lot. and. Uh, if you're in the need of some good cutlery, uh, check them out at madcowcutlery.com and, uh, and uh, you will not be disappointed. So, I'm going to take this first rack out and show you how I take this membrane off. There's a lot of different ways. I've seen people use butter knives and work in between the bones. There, there's actually two layers here. There's this outside membrane that we're going to peel off. Then there's a really, really thin inside uh, membrane, I guess. And once it's hard to, to describe, but once you start peeling on it and picking at it, you can separate them fairly easy, and you can tell the difference. Um, if you're just peeling and peeling and peeling and not getting anywhere, you're probably trying to get both membranes at the same time. So, um, again, some people use the back of a spoon handle. Some people use a butter knife. I like to use a dry paper towel, and what I'll do is just kind of bend these this rack around sometimes i'll pick it up and i'll start picking at the end and again you can kind of tell i don't know if i'm gonna be able to get this in the shot very well but once once you get this outer membrane started your paper towel gives you traction on this slick membrane once i get it started up i just start working my fingers between that outer and inner layer and once i've gotten my fingers all the way through it's easy enough to just pull in the middle middle and you'll see just like that it peels away from both ends you've got all this membrane and then most of the time it comes off fairly clean every once in a while you'll get one that's got some cuts or some tears in it and it doesn't want to separate in one piece it's no big deal it's, it's tedious to pull each little piece off but if you can get it started in the middle without tearing or breaking and then just pull up from the middle like you just saw it is super super simple to do now the good thing about baby backs most of the time and especially for eating you're not going to do a lot of trimming this is not a competition where you're you're trying to get the most uniform the most prettiest straightest bones all this we're going to be eating these this afternoon. So the only thing that I do, and again, this is more my own OCD, something like this, where you've just got some scraggling little fat or some skin or something, I'll take that off. I mean, again, I'd rather do a little bit of work on this side of the cook 
than when I'm sitting there eating and finding little scraps of something that I should have removed. The other thing that I'll do is I kind of feel down the cut ends. Sometimes blade gets dull with the processor. Um, maybe the bone just cracks and you'll get little pieces just right here on the end. The end of this bone is cracked. Now, again, it's going to cook away. It's probably not going to be noticed, but I'm going to say it a thousand times in these video series. Anything I can do on this side of the cook, uh, on the on the prep side makes the finished side so much better and all I'm doing is just picking out the little bit of little chars of of loose bone or anything I'm gonna go ahead and actually what I'm gonna do this is not something I normally do for eating ribs for competition we'll cut the ends off but I'm gonna find the meat between these two bones and just go ahead and cut this last bone off um, now you can save it for sausage you can do different things but i just like a a neat clean presentation when i sit down and eat my dinner you know especially we're doing ribs um so i'm just going to cut that it, you're not losing a lot of meat by doing that and it's just one of those things that there's a little better shot of it it's just where that bone cracked and it was still kind of stuck in there and I I just have a thing if I'm sitting there eating a rack of ribs and I bite into a little piece of bone that I know I could have took care of on the cook on the trimming side it just you know it just ain't nice so that's all I'm gonna do with that I'm gonna do the second rack, rack of ribs here in a minute I'm gonna show you what I do here to season up these ribs um, and I'm gonna give a shout out to my friend Sean He's the one that told me about this jalapeno mustard. I don't know if you can see it real well, see the label, but uh, he had mentioned that he was using mustard as a binder and found this jalapeno mustard and said it just kind of added a pop. Um, most Mustard, normally you don't taste mustard on the ribs at all. A lot of people go, oh, I don't want mustard on my ribs. Well, really the, the mustard flavor goes away with the barbecue seasoning. Um, the only, the, the truest benefit of putting mustard or any other kind of thing on there is, is to give the, the, the seasoning something to stick to. Um, this meat is a little tacky, so it's not a hundred percent necessary, but I also believe the vinegar in the mustard helps to kind of break down this muscle fiber and make the, uh, rib meat just a little more tender. Well, with this jalapeno mustard, I'm excited to see if it really does kind of add a pop or a zing to these ribs. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just, I can see in here too, there's little finely minced pieces of jalapeno in this mustard. Uh, as I'm spreading it around, I can kind of see it. So that should add a little bit of kick to it. I'm gonna be uh, happy to try this out and see. And uh, who knows, that may be another little competition secret down the road. So. Um, a lot of guys will, will put mustard on the back side. I don't put a lot. Uh, a lot of times if I get a good enough coat on the front end, uh, on the front side or the top side, then I'll just kind of run my hand over it, get a little extra on my glove, and then rub it on the back. Because all you really want it to do is make it sticky for the seasoning to stick to. You don't want to put your seasoning on, flip it over, and half of your seasoning fall off. I'm just using my Uncle Pookie's barbecue uh, barbecue blend. Um, it's a little, it's it's more sweet than it is spicy, but it's got not a, a nice little kick. Um, it's not really something that lingers too much, but it's not just pure sweet either. So uh, I've been doing well with this seasoning uh, competitions this year, and uh, I like it. it's not overly salty. It's not overly sweet but it's a little bit of both and like i said it's got just a little bit of heat after you've started eating you kind of notice a little tingle that lingers around so it's a well-balanced blend of salt and sweet and heat now i do coat the sides the edges everywhere and the ends of the bones with this rub i mean any kind of rub that you use is fine but i like to make sure special with ribs because you you're not talking about just a super meaty product. I want seasoning 
on all sides, ends, and everything of this rack of ribs. So that's what we're doing here. I don't want it so, it's not like the, the Boston butt where you, you know, you've got so much fat that's rendering that cooks off some of the extra seasoning if you overcoat it. Um, I like a nice even coat, but I don't want it just soaked where it's just caking on. Um, I want just enough that co covers every bit of the meat. I do pat it down just a little bit to kind of help it stick to the, the meat just a little bit with that mustard as a binder. And I just want to make sure I've got an even coat. So that looks really, really good. Um, so I'm going to do up this other rack of ribs here. Do it the same way. Not needing to waste your time watching all this. We've got the uh, Weber kettle going outside. Um, I put the lid on it and had the vents wide open so it'll still continue to catch. But it's not going to just burn all the way around before we get back out there. So we're going to go check out the fire. I'm going to get this other rack of ribs seasoned up real quick. And we'll be right back. Got our ribs. They've sweated in nicely. You can't see any of the dry seasoning. It is all soaked into the meat. The grill is sitting at 241 degrees. And of course it's about to go up. But you can see I started it here on the end. I don't know how well you can see it in there. But it's just barely slowly burning across. Now one piece of wood uh, is burning nicely. And I've got my temp probe in there. I may move it once I get these ribs on. But I'm going to put the camera down for just a minute and uh, get these ribs on and be right back. Stay tuned. Since this is the end where my fire is burning, I put the thicker side of the ribs towards it. I uh, let the thinner, less meaty side be away from the heat. And what I'm going to do in one hour, I'm going to come out here and readjust i'm going to turn this grate a little bit more as the fire is burning that way i'm going to slowly turn these thick end of the ribs away from the fire and closer to the other end so we get more even cook and then after an hour i'm also going to swap positions with these two racks of ribs so that uh, the thicker rack in the back doesn't uh, take so long and the thinner rack up front uh, get done quicker so anyway i'm gonna put the lid back on before this fire gets away and uh stay tuned we'll be back in just a little bit I'm gonna move these ribs a little bit they are a little warm so it's time to rush a little bit you see i move my my heat probe a little bit my temperature probe to watch the temperatures everything's looking really good so I'm going to leave them on for another hour and we will check back and see what we're looking like. The uh, Jealous Devil lump charcoal has been running a little bit warmer than what I like. Uh, it is lump charcoal. It does typically burn a little hotter. But um, still we're in good range. Right now the, the thermometer is reading 270. So it's not completely out of, out of pocket. So we've been on the, the grill cooking at a lower temperature for a little over two hours, almost two and a half hours. So we'll see here in just a second. The, the color on the ribs looks really good. Um, so I'm ready to go ahead and wrap these. And what I want to do, I want to put a little more seasoning in that wrap. So as the, the rest of the fat in those ribs does render and become more liquid, I want the seasoning to kind of uh, marinate a little bit, if you will. So I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of seasoning in this first layer of aluminum foil. And I'm going to put in a little butter. Now, a lot of a lot of competition teams will use this blue bottle of butter here. And it is good. It's nice because it's already in kind of a liquid form. But a stick of butter cut in half is going to do the exact same thing. It's not any problem at all. So I'm going to lift up the lid here. You can see we've got really good color on these ribs right now. Put this, And I like to put my ribs meat side down so that that meat will sit in these juices and marinate 
for the next hour to two hours. Put a little bit more butter in there. And that's all we've got to do. These are eating ribs, they're not competition ribs. So all I'm going to do is kind of center it in this foil, wrap it up. I don't, I don't want a lot of extra room in this foil. I don't want that liquid to steam uh, too much in here. I mean, there's going to be a little bit of room. I want it to maneuver around, but we're going to double wrap these ribs for two reasons. One, just give it a little extra insulation from this fire, and also it's a way to keep this fire or keep the uh, the foil. If I move the ribs around at all, the uh, grates on the rack won't tear up the the outside layer of this foil. So I'm gonna put that right back there. We're gonna do the same thing again. Put a good amount of butter in this foil. It's also creating moisture. It's it's gonna add some richness into the uh, the flavors that we're putting on here. And it's, it's just turning into a little bit more liquid so that you've got some fluid in there. It's not just a dry uh, cooking area. That moisture is going to help keep the, the meat moist as well. So we're going to fold this layer to kind of make a tight wrap. Close up the ends. And then do the same thing with this outside layer. Just as another insulator for the meat so it's not going to get too hot. Put that back on the grill and I'm going to take this lid off real quick. I do have gloves on but it's going to be a hot process trying to turn these ribs just a little bit away from the fire. As it's burning across it's getting closer and closer to my probe here. That's probably one reason why it's reading so hot. So I'm going to make a little adjustment on the bottom airflow while I had it there. And we're still in good shape. So we are running good. The fuel is burning very clean. There's no wood left to burn. There may be a little left of the original wood, but it's not, we're not trying to get any more smoke flavor. I believe we've got another two hours or more of charcoal on this fire. So we're going to go ahead and leave this fire like it is. Get these ribs on there. Our temperature is climbing back up now, so we will check it again in an hour. See you soon. Now here we go, everybody. I have pulled the ribs off of the cooker. It has been an hour and a half that they have been wrapped up and I'm going to check out here and see and oh my goodness awesome bone exposure here it's it blows through the back a little bit sometimes but that is just perfect perfect I'm just about to tear as I'm picking them up that is perfect timing so what I'm gonna do Oh yeah, they're a little light on the color, which they'll do a lot of times when you put the butter in here, but that's okay. I'm not too concerned about the color because they still look really good. They're not over dark. I'd rather them be a little light colored than a little dark color. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take, if I can maneuver this here, I'm going to take my shaker and I'm going to put another layer of seasoning on these ribs and then I'm going to put them back on the grill what it'll do is kind of dry out and make them a true dry rib they won't dry out as far as the meat moisture but I'm going to put them back on the grill for about 20 to 30 minutes let them dry up let them tighten up a little bit they've been kind of steaming in this juice so we're going to get them back on the grill got just enough charcoal left I mean we've made it almost all the way around here that is just perfect and I'm gonna lay them across the grill grate here to uh, get them dried out and ready to go so we will check back with you when we've got them done 
and at the table ready to break them open. Stay tuned. All right, here we are with the finished product. We uh, started off with these two racks of ribs, used the, uh, the new uh, jalapeno mustard as a binder, uh, and then just simply my barbecue rub, no other seasonings on it. Uh, threw them on the Weber kettle and uh, set up the charcoal snake uh, so that it would burn lower and slower, not at you know four or five hundred degrees like you normally get with the grill. Um, set it up on indirect cooking so that these ribs were off the fire. Uh, they cooked open with just the seasoning and the smoke, hitting them uh, for about two and a half hours. Um, after that, we, we put some butter in the aluminum foil and some more of my dry rub and wrapped them up, uh, cooked them for another hour and a half, that same 250 range. At times, the, the lump charcoal does burn a little bit hotter, so it did get up uh, in the 260s and 270 a couple of times, but for the most part, we maintained that 250-ish mark. Um, and then once they were done, the bones were pulling out. Uh, you could see in the foil that the bones were, were breaking through the back membrane that's left. Um, I went ahead and pulled them out, put a little more seasoning on them, and let them uh, just sit directly on the grill grate um, for another 30 minutes. So we're looking at two and a half, three and a half, four and a half um, hours total cook time for two racks of ribs. And as you can tell, when I took one of them off, they already started to break. Um, they are done perfectly. I mean, they're just breaking right apart. No, no knife needed for these. Um, perfect pull there. And my favorite part, even though a lot of people say it is a little drier, this loin meat right across the top. Mm. It's very, very simple rib recipes here. And a Memphis rib being dry. This particular seasoning is not overly sweet. It's not overly spicy. It's not um, extra salty. It's just a good, well balanced rub. Mm. Meat is tender. And baby backs tend to have a little bit more fat on this thicker end. All that fat has rendered out. Bone comes out clean. I mean, this is just the way to go here. So, again, you don't have to have high-end, uh, complicated equipment to do good barbecue. Uh, simple kettle-style grill where you can have your heat off to the side and have it do a, a long, slow burn instead of all just piled up in one one big bundle. You can do a, a um, an offset cook. Uh, sometimes we've even put a small, like a um, disposable aluminum pan filled with water in between the charcoal and the uh, uh, the meat. If you've got a lot of, of meat taken up, maybe if you did three or four racks of ribs, that would also help to uh, separate the meat from that direct heat. So keep that in mind. You don't have to have this complicated equipment to do good barbecue. So uh, appreciate you tuning in and watching. Again, if you like the video, subscribe, uh, share the video with your friends and your family so they would subscribe, and um, feel free to submit any ideas. We're going to continue uh, with this series, this entry-level barbecue series. I've got another four or five episodes in mind, and then we're going to move up to a more intermediate um, techniques and recipes that are a little bit more complicated, but still, we're all going to be able to do it. So... Uh, Appreciate y'all tuning in. Y'all have a great weekend and uh, tune in next time.